Welcome back to Learning Docker. In today's tutorial, we're going to be covering basic Docker networks. Now, most of the slides today are just extracts from the Docker documentation and have corresponding links. If you need more information about the slide, there should be a link in the description box down below, so check it out. So, networks in Docker are essentially driven off drivers, or more specifically, Docker's networking subsystem is pluggable using drivers. Several drivers exist by default and provide core networking functionality. Now, I've broken this up into what I perceive as six sections. So the first, user-defined bridge networks are best when you need multiple containers to communicate on the same Docker host. Then you have host networks. Host networks are best when you, um, sorry, host networks are best when the network stack should not be isolated from the Docker host, but you want the other aspects of the container to be isolated. Then overlay networks. Overlay networks are best when you need containers running on different Docker hosts to communicate or when multiple applications work together using swarm services. Then Mac VLAN or Mac VLAN networks. Mac VLAN networks are best when you are migrating from a VM setup or need your containers to look like physical hosts on your network, each with a unique MAC address. Then third party networks. Third party network plugins allow you to integrate Docker with specialized network stacks. And finally, you can opt for none. None can be also specified, but typically is used in conjunction with a custom network driver. Now, there's lots of different types of networks, as you can see here, that you can use within Docker. We're just going to uh, focus today on the user defined bridge networks, or more specifically, just bridge networks as a whole. So, what is a bridge network? In terms of Docker, a bridge network uses a software bridge which allows containers connected to the same bridge network to communicate, while providing isolation from containers which are not connected to that bridge network. Let's have a look at this, um, or let's have a look at just the benefits of this. So we can have better isolation and interoperability between containerized applications, automatic DNS resolution between containers, containers can be attached and detached from user-defined networks on the fly, each user defined network creates a configurable bridge. And finally, link containers on the default bridge network share environment variables. So all amazing points. Let's have a look at this in a more visual aspect. So let's just say we have three networks. We have the default bridge network. We have our two user defined bridge networks. So we have website A and website B. Let's just chuck in some um, architectural containers to these. So on our default, we just simply have Ubuntu. Website A is a PHP, Apache, and MySQL powered um, website. And website B is Java and MongoDB backed. So let's have a look at the interactions that can occur within these networks. Now there's only one container in default, so nothing there. In website A, PHP and Apache, can, or PHP in this case, would talk to MySQL, and in website B, Java would talk to Mongo. Where uh, you might have interactions that can't happen would be, for instance, Ubuntu talking to PHP and Apache, and Mongo on PHP and Apache talking to MongoDB. Now, in theory, there is ways of routing around these networks, but I'm not gonna go into that too much, it gets quite quite in depth with networking i can cover it if people really want me to trust me to be honest you really wouldn't want to know it so there is a little um a little catch with uh, essentially containers containers can also exist in multiple networks not just that obviously if it exists in multiple networks that means multiple applications can also access the same network it's kind of a cross container but it's not really so We've talked a lot about the network containers, uh, the networks and the containers within the network. So let's kind of just get into the code and, and, and see some of this actually working. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna simply create a Docker network uh, by simply stating Docker network create and then just simply call it my network. There's a lot of configuration that could go into the creation of a network, but I wanna keep things really simple. So we've created our network. We can verify the creation of our network by simply saying Docker network ls and we should see it there so we see it here name is my network and our driver is simply the bridge by default when you create a container it should exist under the bridge network and the bridge network only so let's add our first or create our first container within our network now 
With this one, I'm just gonna take you the extract from our first tutorial where we spun up an Nginx instance, but this, the only difference is here, I'm gonna attach it to my network and I'm also gonna name it my host. If you remember from the slides, it does automatic DNS resolving. Now, based off the actual Docker container name, it can actually resolve off the host name, my host. And I'll show you that in a second. So let's start by spinning up our Docker container within our network. Uh, what's going on here? Uh, error response from, I, I have a Docker image with that name. So let's just do Docker image, uh, Docker images. Doc, spot right, Docker, remove image. And let's just kill off, uh, where the hell is that being referenced? Da, 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 da. The container at my host is already a container. Used by, actually, have I still got a container running? Docker PS. I don't have a container running. Let's just do a quick bit of debugging in this video. Images, export history, processes, attach, uh, build, commit, cp, diff. There shouldn't be any containers. Well, I have to debug why that's the case. There's probably a quick fix, but for now, I'm just going to call it Docker uh, My Host 2 just to stop any confusion. So let's just run our container within the network. Granted, this time it is actually called My Host 2 because I've screwed something up somewhere. I need to find out what it is. Now, there's a way that we can actually test to see if we can access our container. Now, one way would simply be to go to it into a browser, but because um, the network also acts as a little bit as a gateway to us. It doesn't matter which network we're using when we're accessing it externally. So it should always just work. But obviously we can't interact from a different network. So if I create a Docker container uh, with no network specified, so it should default to the bridge container, or the default bridge container, um, using an image called Tutum curl. Now this is basically an Ubuntu image with a curl pre-installed. I can do things like curl www.google.com and get some crap back. Or I could hopefully curl my host too. But it can't resolve it because it doesn't exist within our network. So what happens if I use the same command, but instead of not specifying a network, specify the network my network. Now, if I curl my host to, it actually returns the HTML response. So it resolves the name that we've specified. So in this case here, my host to, I'll actually create this in the tutorial. So it'll just say my host instead of my host to, and I'll try and update what I did wrong. It's probably just some image or some container lingering around in the background somewhere. Uh, but either way, I can actually curl data from that because it's part of that network. So if I kill off this container, now I had a bit of trouble with this before, um, I can actually now detach, like I said from the benefits, I can attach and attach containers on the fly by simply saying docker um, network disconnect my host to. What have I done wrong there? Ah, I need to specify the network as well. So docker network disconnect my network and get rid of my host two on my network. So if I try and curl it um, using my curl container within the network, so I do curl my host two, couldn't resolve it, okie dokie. Now hopefully if this works, please work. I can connect it back. Spin up my container, curl my host two and it actually resolves again. Fantastic, that didn't actually work a second ago, so I don't actually know what was wrong with that. But either way, that is essentially how you create a network. Create a container within the network, um, create a container outside the network and try and access it, get um, permission, well, basically unable to resolve, then add another network a container into the network, resolve it, and then basically, sorry, add another container into your network. It should then resolve the first container then we can try removing it, adding it, and then verify that the 
adding it back still works. So that's all the great things that we can do with networks in Docker. I'm going to cut the tutorial here today. I want to do a little bit more on Docker networks, but I want to take it into sort of um, Docker Compose and how to set up networks using Docker Compose. So either way, if you found this tutorial useful, give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in the tutorials I'm going to be providing in the future, which will at some point be more Solidity, uh, PHP, Docker, and any other things that I have quite an expertise on, I will give you, obviously you'll get notified straight away. If you do have any questions or comments, please leave them in the description box down below. But until next time, I will see you around.